Today I'm going to show you a remake of a video I made last year about hammer shaping, but before that I'm going to show you some interesting videos and some pictures that might interest you. Here's a picture of some very worn hammers, and we see these all the time, way flat. These will give you awful sound. Now these are not quite as worn, but they need reshaping and resurfacing. This shows you a set of hammers that I'm getting ready to reshape on a grand piano, and you can see how I've got them blocked up and ready to file. Here's a hammer that is awfully misshapen. It was produced this way in the factory, so we have to do something. So what I did with this one is I filed it, reshaped it. Now this is the sculpting. I've reshaped that same hammer. There it is, and I haven't quite finished the top of it. Here's a picture of a Steinway hammer that's misshapen. It's off balance. One side is much bigger than the other side. And so in the next picture, I showed you how I reshaped it and balanced that to where it's perfectly balanced on both sides of the hammer. Here's another one that's misshapen from one side. And also notice the strike point is off. Notice where the crown is, where it hits. This hammer is unsavable. We, we can't do anything. We must replace that hammer. Now, this is a really odd shape of hammers that I found. They're moon shaped. I don't know what they were doing here. But what's funny is these actually sounded pretty good in the piano. I don't recommend it. Don't ever do that. This is an example of someone who thinned the hammer for whatever reason, but we don't want to do that. These hammers are so flat that we have to just throw them away and, and hang new hammers. These are no good for anything. This is a set of hammers that was on a Mason Hamlin B, and it was hitting the soundboard, the edge of the soundboard, and somebody just filed them and took that off so it wouldn't hit, but absolutely awful example of, of what not to do with, with pianos. I had to replace these hammers. Now, I don't know why they cut these hammers and re-glued them there. I would never do anything like this, but it's just another example of things that I found. This is uh, from a set of hammers on a Steinway D, and what I did was I took number 88 of the new hammer and number 88 of the old hammer to show you how much felt is missing, what the new hammers and what the old hammers look like. And this is something you can share with clients to show them what happens when the hammer has been filed too much and worn down, and so we definitely had to put a new set of hammers. Look at the felt on this. These are the same hammers with the samples put in the piano. Notice the strike point up there. The hammer blow distance is going to be different. Now that gives you another example of why we need to replace hammers. There's just not enough felt, and it also changes the geometry. The blow distance is way different from the new hammer to the old hammer. Now here we have a set of hammers that somebody recently filed. Look at the variance of the shapes. And I think that's because they did single hammer filing. They're very careful maybe in, in one hammer, but it, when I game file, it helps me to not have that problem. You notice though their angle, so I gotta cut him some slack there, whoever did this. They probably did it single hammer, but they weren't worried about the shape being the same from one hammer to the next. So, they all need to look very uniform. Now, this is an example of the tails not being the right length. Look at how the tails are sitting on the board. So in this instance, I would probably file from the shank. Before you file hammers, you really should align the hammers to strings and get all that done first. This is just a mess here, but let's straighten all the things out and make the hammers really nice looking and always possible. Now this shows the string marks or the string cuts on the hammers and how we need to align those hammers better to that upright piano. You can see the marks will tell you a lot about what you need to do. Here we see hammers on one side that I started to reshape in contrast to what there is needed to be done on the hammers that I haven't touched yet. And here is another example of that. I reshaped the hammers on this side and you can see the difference that it makes in just the beauty of the hammers on the left versus the right. The same here, this is just a really flat hammer. Look what happens after I filed it and shaped it. Now you don't have to take hours and hours to refile hammers. Dale Irwin has a mechanical system that you can file with, it's wonderful. I don't have that yet, but I have a paddle and a sanding strip. With those two things, I can usually do a set of hammers, sculpt them in about 10 minutes, not including the base. The base only takes five or 10 minutes with a single strip, and that's how I do those uh, in the base, a single strip, because of the angle. Also, some in the treble are a little bit angled, and I will do those with a single uh, strip. But 
learn to do it quickly. You sculpt them and then you refine that shape. And then at the end, you fine tune those where they look beautiful. And that's what this next video is about. First thing you want to do in reshaping the hammers using this method is to lay down a cloth that will catch all the felt, the dust that goes in there, and it'll just help you clean up a little better. Then I have a long voicing block. You can actually use the key slip if you're very careful with it. I've never damaged the key slip doing this, but put something underneath and that, that supports all your hammers and you've got a cloth. The paddle I like to use is an 80 grit on one side and 150 on the other. And you want to start pretty low on, on one shoulder. And you want to only take off one third of the string cuts. Leave the top third on the very crown. Go up over the top and the reason you use a wider paddle, it, it stops you from angling the hammers at all. And you might see that uh, on some hammers they're very angled on the, about the break. On those, you want to go ahead and single file them if they're angled too much. But you can usually take some of the crown off and remove, one, once again, remove only one third on each side. Now I'm going on the other side with these and taking off one third of the string groove on that side. So you, uh, the proximal side or the distal side, uh, you can call them whatever you want, one side or the other side. But leave that one third of the crown on top. Go through, and the first thing you're doing it's just roughing them in. You're using that rough sandpaper, getting the rough shape. You're sculpting these hammers. And then uh, the next thing I like to do is go over with 150 grit and even up to 320 grit. The one I'm using on this paddle is 320. And you notice I'm going up and over the crown just slightly. You can take a little bit of the string groove off, but you want to leave a hint of that groove all the way. And you'll remove that at the very end when you're mating hammers to strings. But if you take that hint of string groove off, you're actually taking felt that you don't need to remove. Sanding strips work very well. This uh, strip of sandpaper that I have here is something like a 600. Really what we're doing now is making the surface look smoother. Even though I'm going over the top a little bit, I'm still leaving that hint of a string groove. And of course, I like to vacuum uh, every now and then. I'll just vacuum some things up so I can see what the, the felt looks like after I'm through there. And notice I haven't touched the base yet.